So, uh, my topic is uh, understanding political polarization. What's next? Actually, uh, what I wanted to, just to talk about, uh, it's not just uh, to dive too much deeply into philosophy of science and to discuss, for example, the use and uh, application of model or metaphor in social inquiry, but just, uh, and not to give uh, a final, a final solutions so or final final answers, but uh, my 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 major object of concern, my biggest concern now is actually uh, by using uh, model and metaphor to discuss uh, the recent trend in, uh, in let's say in philosophy and in, so in, in, in political philosophy in social sciences. Uh, this recent tre tre trend, I would I would call it like uh, a shift to emotional effect and what kind of implications it can have for the future of democracy. So why I'm actually focusing now on model and metaphor. Uh, just following up uh, yesterday's workshop and Ivana's uh, attempt to, to, to focus attention on utopia question actually, uh, uh, from my own perspective, model and metaphor is very interesting that in some sense, uh, we have some kind of reference to utopia, the original reference to, of Thomas More, utopia. Where it's not about uh, some kind of uh, utopian projects uh, looking very, very, very long into the future, but uh, meaning that... Um, uh, Thomas More's utopia, it was like some kind of description of a utopian society, but not in the future, but somewhere, somewhere next to us, somewhere in imagined place, in the Im imagined land, but still in the present. And uh, it, it has some kind of similarities of model and metaphor, which also suggests some kind of analogy or likeness between ideas and objects. Uh, actually, the, the, there are some kind of discussions uh, uh, which is better model or metaphor, metaphor. But in, in, in my case right now, I'm not going to, to, to discuss uh, the advantages or disadvantages of model or metaphor. No, I'm not changing. I'm still on the second one, okay? Okay, first. So my idea is, uh, I, I just said, I would like to int we briefly introduce model and metaphor, uh, what, how we can use them to study and analyze po political polarization. And then at the end, uh, just, um, uh, just to suggest how they can be helpful in understanding uh, the current challenges. Uh, for example, now you see it? Right. Okay, I just left my, my full screen. Uh, this is what was my brief introduction into my topic, uh, how model and metaphor can be useful in social inquiry. And then I I'll briefly just go uh, and uh, show, try to show how we, how we can are uh, used in explaining uh, political polarization uh, by model. For example, well, I, as exemplary model, I, I, I have chosen agent-based model. Uh, well, the, the major features of agent-based models are like, uh, it's, uh, they are trying to analyze the interactions of agents, so-called agents on micro and macro level. And the basic idea of agent-based model is to bridge a gap between micro and macro level so-called to demystify <laughs> to demystify uh, the emergence on the macro level uh, of course it comes with certain uh, uh, mathematical rules uh, computational representations visual vis visualizations and so on and uh, well, not going too much deeply, uh, just I'm, I'm presenting a couple of 
examples of how models are used basically in explaining political polarization. The first one model, uh, actually it's uh, based on German experience. Uh, it, it, the major premises of a model, of course, uh, modeling is uh, based on the, 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 the rationality premises, reasoning, um, mechanical, technical, mathematical reasoning. And actually it that's one of the advantages that they are, uh, what kind of specific ways, specific tools to analyze uh, the current issues, current problems. They are not perfect. And uh, actually, it's, I, I, again, I, I want to stress, I'm not going to criticize, but uh, just to give a general impressions uh, of the use of the models regarding uh, ex political polariz polarization analysis. Uh, and another one, mod well, the first one, for example, it just, uh, uh, identifies the funds parties as utility maximizers and uh, uh, voters are like, uh, well, in the sense, uh, uh, they become, they are turning, they turned like, a, like a punishers of uh, the governing, governing coalition, which is, for example, in case of Germany, it was like uh, social democracy and Christian Democrats, and when it occupied this so-called center of ideological space, so some kind of, some part of voters supposedly, they just uh, punished them in some sense irrationally by, by going to, to the extremes, uh, but it's just the premises of a model. Another one model, it's like, uh, uh, again, well, it, uh, uh, it uh, dis discusses, uh, Mm, polarization in, in terms that uh, uh, two well, um, opposing parties, they are just uh, some kind of enclosed into a vicious circle loop and basically they just, uh, they just reinforcing in the inside this political polarization uh, feeded by, by pol policy, by public opinion. So it's, uh, again, it's a technical, technical language uh, trying to, to, to represent the ide ideological positions, ideological spaces and uh, the behavior of agents like a numerical mathematical way. Well, so of, co of course it has some kind of sh shortcomings. So uh, that's actually, I think it's also useful to use metaphors in, in social inquiry because metaphors is, is not just a figure of speech but it, 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 it's, it, it is quite useful mechanism of conceptual dis displacement. Uh, it, it has uh, some kind of, as well as cognitive, cognitive purposes, not just uh, literary ones. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, Umberto Eco actually, uh, he, he, he used to emphasize that uh, this distinction between black box and white box, I still remember, uh, by trying to build a bridge between micro and macro level, uh, uh, well, in case of model and formal reasoning, this space between micro and macro, it's like some kind of black box. No, the, according to, to this kind of reasoning, it's, it's not necessary to care about what is going inside black box. As far as we know, input parameters, output, parameter, output parameters, and we can analyze regularities and we can, and, and we can have some kind of control on, on, on the outcome from the black box. Umberto Eco, he, 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 he suggested that by, by the use of metaphor, we can try a little bit to lift the lid of a black box and to turn it in, into a white box. Of course, we can't see everything in perfect way, what is going inside the black box, but, uh, but the, well, at least this is like, it, it gives some kind of additional insights and some, uh, Mm, of course, it's not clear. So, which means that uh, this is the potential of metaphor is some kind of uh, uh, interpretative one. And of course, in order to to, to provide some kind of uh, clear picture of of a social reality, so it's uh, this this <laughs> interpretation sh should be supported by 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 the research in anthropology, for example, sociology social psychology and so on. So I just introduced briefly what, what, what is the, what are the reasons of models and metaphors? So, and just 
go go into my example of uh, using use of metaphor in, in, in social political analysis. Uh, for example, uh, uh, regarding the metaphor of political animal, actually it's quite a, a popular one. It, it was introduced uh, by Aristotle uh, it already became some kind of frozen metaphor, and uh, but and it uh, gained some kind of derogative meaning. Uh, well, regarding all kind of uh, political mentalities and their behavior, but uh, if if we go to the original meaning of this metaphor, uh, actually it has some useful normative value because political animal uh, is like a famous Aristotle definition of human and. Uh, and according to Aristotle, humans are more than social animals. They, they, sh they should be engaged into, into communities, all these states. But in the current, current, regarding the current challenges of globalization, actually this, uh, I, I would say in the shifting role of state uh, and uh, like in our era of post-truth, uh, there, there, there are some, there are some big issues regarding civic engagement and uh, loyalty to the community. Because uh, in the context of political polarization, we have another one, another one definition, actually, uh, party animal or metaphor, which actually can provide some, some picture what is going right now in our uh, political life. And uh, I'm just, my sources are provided below in the slide, but well, uh, the, I find very interesting research by Matheus and colleagues, and uh, they are social psychologists, and actually they, 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 they did quite interesting analysis about this tendency that uh, uh, parties, this, uh, that regarding this dominant, predominant political mindset, which uh, which doesn't have any more loyalty to community or state, but basically defines his or her loyalty to the party, like strong in-group loyalty, which is expressed by extreme out-group intolerance uh, to political opponents. Uh, sometimes this in intolerance is actually uh, quite uh, is uh, observed for the use of uh, uh, real dehumanizing metaphors. Joseph, we have to hurry on now. Um, okay, so the, 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 least, the recent trend that the tend to affect, uh, why I see a problem in it, actually, there are some, actually, uh, they, they were like in the, in the middle of the 20th century, like uh, two, two, two trends, intellectual sh shifts, like linguistic turn or naturalistic turn, and now actually it's, uh, there are some um, observations that uh, I don't know regarding, will it be like a final, finalized term, like a really established intellectual term or whatever, but uh, we have uh, like uh, based on some kind of ne neurological research, actually, uh, we have a tendency to the affect term, <laughs> affective term. Uh, what I mean by this, the turn to effect that uh, uh, in some, some, some researches, they suggest that uh, it's, it's not about emotional emotions or feelings. Uh, it's, 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 the problem is that uh, some research, research neurological, neurological research suggests that uh, there are like basic basic affects, basic emotions, which doesn't depend on, on, on our interpretations, on our intentions. So it's, uh, uh, so it's, they are just gen genetically determined by, by biological hardware of brain. And uh, uh, what this means actually, that uh, like there are different camps, the last slide, the, there are different camps which uh, like viewed the, the effects like with having uh, emancipatory potential, for example, uh, which uh, 
which uh, induces some kind of uh, unpredictability, unpredictability and uh, intensity, which reinforces resistance, uh, move, resistance and consolidates movements. But actually, it, from another point of view, uh, the, the, the exploitation of effects, we also have some kind of manipulative potential uh, from advertisement to informational uh, war. What, what, what does it suggest that actually, I, I see that we have some kind of danger and that, uh, that our intellectual disagreements, uh, political disputes, uh, they can become basically irrelevant, which makes that public space can become wiped, wiped out. And, uh, and uh, basically after a transformation of dispute dialogue into this, pseudo political emotional exchange. So my, 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 my final suggestion is just again to invite invite uh, or reintroduce models or metaphors for like discussing or, or building new functional public spaces. That's Thank all. You.